did you ever feel as if that, you know, you're in a rush to accomplish something? Not a rush, but I do understand, you know, putting a time frame on a goal, mm-hmm. like not necessarily having a hard date, but maybe a range. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Are you looking to build to keep or building to sell? For now, I'm building to keep. Mm. So are you advising that start off with a lean canvas first or do you start with a business plan from day one? Depends on what your strategy is. Hello and welcome to Hustle of Everything podcast. This is the podcast where we receive stories, tips, and tactics for entrepreneurs who have done it. Today, yo, as always, we've got a treat for you. We got Chantal Wow in the building. You know, she has helped entrepreneurs raise over 500K and she has a six figure business. And we're going to dive deep into her story, give you uh, tips and tactics to help you thrive. And it's going to be a good conversation. You know, I'm excited for it. So first and foremost, as always, we're going to have the Hustle Nation, the business tip of the week, and this converse, you know. But yo, Chantel, what's good at you? How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Most definitely. Owen. Yes, sir. Alex Ritter. Chantel, you know, this is actually a pleasure to have you here at... uh, in our recording space, we're supposed to do one together, you and I, yes. for uh, Face the Other Canada podcast. By the way, if you haven't heard of that podcast, go check it out. Um, but I'm happy to have you here and uh, talk business, talk life, talk about being a mom, talk about being an entrepreneur, and uh, just inspire the masses. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Yes, yes. Yes, so... Um, Let's get into business tip. Business tip of the week. Let's get straight into it. So business tip of the week this week is some of the trends that I see happening in 2023. You know, off the top, one of the main ones that I see happening is the surge of podcasts across the nation. Mm-hmm. So, this, and the second one I'm going to get into is the use of creators for businesses. So, let's talk about the first one, podcasts for businesses. Um, one thing I'm realizing is that there's no, there's no more B2B marketing. That's kind of dead. It's now human to human marketing, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? So it's actually getting people to, just taking your message as an entrepreneur or a person who's experienced that piece of tech, piece of software, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when it comes to having podcast as a growth tool, just like we're doing now, having conversations, mm-hmm. I think is gonna explode over 2023, as well as fake podcasts. Fake pods. Fake pods. This yeah. is huge. This is like a this, growing this is a market. Huge things. Huge things. The, instead of us actually interviewing somebody, people be interviewing themselves. Yeah. You know. I've heard about mm-hmm. that. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a it's a big thing blossoming. You know. And I think that's one thing that's going to grow because you don't really need to talk, talk to some people sometimes, and you can control the conversation more, have it feel organic, but still get your message across how you want to get your specific customer avatar back into your circle, back into your, you know, grasp of, you know, influence and convert them. So that's number one. And number two, creators. So creators as a tool for their business. What you see with MTV, how, you know, there's VJs Mm -hmm. and different people that are front of the face for their brand. You're going to see businesses hire creators specifically for their brand. So there's someone talking about them on social consistently, Mm -hmm. you know? So um, that's going to be the next play where we're going to see a lot of businesses now hiring creators. We're going to see Tim Hortons creators. (laughs) It's going to be talking (laughs) about coffee over and over and over. I'm sure It gets deep, eh? It gets deep. It gets really deep, and it's good to see. Most definitely. So that's the business tip of the week this week, you know, the predictions for 2023. Let me know what you think of those. Do you think this will happen? Do you think it won't? Do you think it will be useful for you? I'd love to chat. What do you think about that, Shanta? I think that is actually a trend that I can see happening because as you're running your business, as you're running your business, you know, you get extremely busy. And I can see myself potentially hiring somebody to do some media and talk about my business all the time because mm-hmm. I'm busy working. Mm-hmm. So I could see that being a plus. And when you were saying having the fake interviews, I think I've seen that trend before where people, you know, they have a setup they're and it looks, the yeah, it looks like somebody speaking to them and they're talking to a person, whatever. Meanwhile, it's just they're talking to themselves. Mm-hmm. And I saw that happening. And I was like, I couldn't believe that was actually a thing. But I mean, you know, people are getting creative these days and you have to be to stay you on gotta top. Be. You, you gotta be. You have to you be gotta creative. You gotta put out content. Yeah. Everyone's a media company these days. <laughs> exactly. That yeah. is true. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. is true. Yeah, yeah. And with everyone being a media company, podcasts one of the lowest lift things of, ex- oh, of executing. So yeah, that's one of the, the main things. What do you think, bro, about, about that? The fake pods? Fake pods. I mean, we're, we're building a business around fake pods, aren't we? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> people want to be interviewed just like that, you know, so. 
Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So we're actually creating a business. I don't know if you we, you know about this, but we have um, another side of our media company called Apple Studios, okay. where we actually work with professionals and helping them create content around their services and what they do. Oh, wow. So we service like real estate agents, mortgage brokers, financial planners, uh, essentially people who don't have time to make content, mm -hmm. but they need someone to produce it and make clips for them online where they can actually say, hey, you know, so if you're looking to get a, a mortgage at this rate, this is what you need to do. But it's actually us behind the camera and they're just talking about certain things. And then once it's in a clip, it sounds like mid-conversation. Oh, wow. So we actually had one with a mortgage broker and this clip is going crazy on social. It has like, I think, 18,000 likes Something to like that, yeah. many comments. And actually, this actually brought him a lot of people engaging with his, with his page um, just from that one clip talking about if you want to get a mortgage, multiply your income times four, and mm -hmm. that's the type of mortgage you can get. Oh, so, yeah. You so guys are doing the thing. We're yeah. doing the thing. So we're servicing <laughs> this this market. I love that. Most yeah. definitely. A little alley-oop. <laughs> <laughs> little promo there, yeah. you know. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, let's get into the Hustle Nation, you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Let's it go. is me. You know, Mr. Hustle Muscle, ready to give you the Hustle Nation tip of the week. And today's tip of the week actually came with a different hustle nation, but I was talking to Mr. Waiter over there mm -hmm. and he inspired me because we're talking about the aspect of time and actually with your goals. So if you look at your goals and you look at time, sometimes you feel as if like you're not where you need to be, but internally you know that I can accomplish this goal. So even though you know you can accomplish this goal, it's gonna happen inevitably, but there's this internal pressure you feel as if like, this is where I wanted to accomplish this goal at by this age, but I'm not there. But that's not the right way to think about it because everything has its own time. Sometimes you're not ready to have that goal yet. Sometimes there's things you need to learn. Sometimes there's, needs, there's things you need to go through to experience. And once all those things come together, you can move on to the next stage, which allows you to actually accomplish that goal. And you're going to feel it much more better. You're going to appreciate it. And everything just comes with its own time. So that is a hustle nation tip of the week. Don't feel like as if you're in a race. Um, everything you've accomplished happened on its own time. So just trust in everything and uh, everything's going to come to fruition. Um, just let it be and it's going to happen. So that is a Hustle Nation tip of the week. I am Mr. Hustle Muscle giving you that sermon on a Saturday morning here with Chantel and Alex. And Chantel, what do you think about that? What do you think about time and actually accomplishing your goals? Because you're someone who has been at it for years now. Yes. And did you ever feel as if that, you know, you're in a rush to accomplish something? Not a rush, but I do understand, you know, putting a time frame on a goal, mm -hmm. like not necessarily having a hard date, but maybe a range, mm -hmm. right? Between this and this time frame. Otherwise, you might not actually accomplish it. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to have that pressure either on yourself because you're right things have to happen first before the next step so maybe think of it in phases when i accomplish this then i'll get to that step when i accomplish that i'll get to that step and i have hope to have this done between the ages of 35 to 40 or something like that as opposed to by the time i'm 30 i need to do this 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 because life you're right mm -hmm. doesn't happen like that mm -hmm. it'll throw you curveballs it'll things will happen to try to get you off your track and you have to go around those things and try to accomplish your goals at the same time. Life happens. Yeah. So. And, and I think that's actually interesting. Sometimes you appreciate the curveballs because you actually, if let's say if you say, okay, by 30, I want to have a house. I want to have this business. I want to be, then you get there. Then you say by year 32, I want to have this. Then you get there. Like, how are you even challenging yourself if you're not facing, because Superman doesn't become Superman if he doesn't beat anybody across. The, the story becomes yeah. interesting because I did this, I went over this, and I did that, yeah. and I accomplished that. You're right. So you need you need some barriers just to teach you lessons. You definitely and you're actually gonna like actually when you accomplish that goal and you go on to the next thing, you're actually stronger, you're better, and you're more equipped now. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like thinking, um, if like breaking a bone. Uh, my son had that happen to him a couple of years ago. And what the doctor was telling us, when that bone repairs itself, it's actually stronger than the bone you had before. And so now mm. his leg that he broke is stronger than the actual leg he's never broken. Wow. So it's like same thing about com overcoming barriers. When you overcome them, you are stronger than you were before that barrier. And now you're ready to take on things that are even harder. Mm. And life will test you that way. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Mm, that, that's a big one. I like that. I like <laughs> yeah. that. That was good. So what's it like being a, a, a mompreneur? 
you know? That's a good question. Yeah. You just have a newborn, like, right? I do have a newborn. Yeah, yeah. L- last time we saw you, you know, you, 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 you were like about to pop. You're pregnant, <laughs> pregnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I was. Yes, you know, you I dro- was. Dropped some pounds. Um, Dro- dropped yes, the child. Dropped the whole baby. Yeah. Um, and dropped it like it's hot. <laughs> oh, wow. I've never heard. <laughs> dropped it like it's hot for <laughs> a child. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> um, it's been... An experience, mm-hmm. as we say, mm-hmm. challenges. Yes. Um, being a mom in business, it it's different every day, mm-hmm. right? Because your kids don't care that you have a business to run or whatever. They just think about themselves. They have their needs, especially a newborn, mm-hmm. right? You have to be there. There's lack of sleep. There's, you know, sleep regression challenges. There's getting them acclimated to the new environment. Mm-hmm. And I have a teenager. Mm-hmm. So I have... A yeah, newborn and a teenager. And a teenage son. I'm, I'm, in, I'm challenged both and ways. And a teenage son teenage needs son. like... All like these are molding years, oh, right? Yes, they are. These are like shaping oh, yes, years of like are. the direction they're gonna go, and then the baby needs to be nurtured. Absolutely. So <sighs> I'm here with this one, and I'm like, so where are you going? Who are you going with? What's your homework like? What what tests are coming up? Oh, this is so sweet. Whatever. And then I have the business, and I have the team, and it it challenges me in many ways, mm-hmm. but I love it. My life feels extremely full, and I'm extremely grateful that I'm able to do all of these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes a lot of discipline a lot of planning, and a lot of support. Mm -hmm. I cannot do this by myself, and I'm not even going to profess to act like I'm doing it all by myself. I have my husband. I have my mother. I have a whole bunch of people that are are around my team, especially. Natasha. Natasha, exactly. Shout out to Natasha. (laughs) 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 Who kept things going for me while I was, you know, um, going through labor and going through the first few months of my daughter's birth. So, you know, without the team, this would not be happening. Mm. So shout out to the team and building a strong team yeah. to help you support your business. And I got to ask you this. As a new mom, right? Yeah. You just have a brand new child. Do you believe like new mothers can start a business with having a kid just born? Yes, I believe we can do anything we really? decide to do. I believe. But as I say, you'll need support, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? You can't have the baby by yourself and start the business because both things are like your babies, yeah. right? They both have needs, especially in the beginning phases. Mm-hmm. So as new moms, um, you can do whatever you want. It's just up to you to decide and put in the work and get the support that you need to make these things happen. Amazing. Yeah, the support, I think, is, is, is key. And it's almost like you said team, but it's almost like more of a community almost. Yes. You know, because yeah. when you say team, it mostly feels like people like in your direct circle, but you have family, mm-hmm. you know, a whole circle of friends and a work team as well. Yes. So now to kick things off, you know, um, let's get into some business tips and because you, you thrive in, you know, helping entrepreneurs out. Matter of fact, let me take a step back. Could you give the people like a one minute in summary of what you do? So I help not just entrepreneurs, but also large scale organizations mm-hmm. put together a growth strategy for, let's say, the next three to five years on how to grow their business, whether it be grow your business by a certain revenue, whether it be grow your business by expanding your team, whether it be grow your business by entering into a new market uh, or demographic area. I help them put a plan together so that they can figure out what are the best steps to take in order to grow their business in the direction they're trying yeah. to take their business. Got gotcha. you. Mm. So with all these years of experience, what are some common things that you see make um, businesses fail? Hmm. There are many things that can happen along the way to make a business fail because the first five years of any business is extremely challenging, mm-hmm. extremely challenging. So one thing I would think about is, <laughs> first things first, not having a plan, mm. right? You're just in business. You're just doing the things, but you have no exact direction of where it is that you're going with the business. What are you trying to do? Also, who are you targeting, right? What is your target demographic? Who are you speaking to? What is your client persona that you're trying to trying to target? And that's thinking of things of what's their age? Mm-hmm. Where do they live? What's their income? Like really getting to the specifics. And also, what, it, what are your operations looking like? Right. What are the details of the operations, the behind the scenes things to make the business run? Who's going to work on administration? Who's going to help you with your financials? What does your marketing strategy look like? Do you have any HR policies in place? When you're onboarding a client, what does that look like? When you're onboarding a new team member, what does that look like? Having these things not done ahead of time can make it challenging when it's happening because your business could grow so fast and you still fail because it's growing so fast and you don't have things in place as these things are happening to you. Yeah, and a lot of people think of failure as me shutting down just due to lack of success. But sometimes you have 
a lot of success yeah. and you don't know how to even manage yes. that success because everything is hitting you as like a it's like you're trying to drink out of a water hose right yeah it's like you're getting all these orders you're getting all these shipments coming in but fulfilling them and delivering them on time and trying to get them out to customers those customers are no longer going to be your customers and you have all this product you gotta offload you trying to sell them on a discount and then you actually end up it. losing money yeah. because you try to expand too fast and when we look at failure, we never see you're a victim of your own success. Yeah, that could happen. And that, you know, is something that people need to think about. What if you have explosive success? You have mm -hmm. to prepare for that as well, or it could turn into a failure. Yeah, I like to picture it as like a bar. You know, if you're like in the line for a bar and you're just there like, hey, I'm trying to get this drink. And then the bartender is <laughs> just there like, what? <laughs> trying to get to each person. And you're the like, drinks are hot. <laughs> Yo, I've been here for a minute. Like, yeah. you know, that's And then you never go back to that place, you right? Never go because back. You didn't it, get the there's service. no system in place to exactly. actually deliver the drinks in a sequential way to every person who's there. That's a great analogy. Yeah, yeah. great yeah. analogy. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was off the cuff. I was uh, off the top. That was a bar. <laughs> I was off the top. All right, all right, all right. So now you talk about strategy a lot, and this listing out all the things you named, it could be you know overwhelming for an entrepreneur, right? Yes. So like, what are some of the? I guess if we were to simplify that into some of the. Uh, like beginner steps for entrepreneurs that are doing all the different things. Cause I feel like a lot of our audience members are, you know, solopreneurs who have, you know, maybe their sister or maybe like one friend, two friends, and they're just trying to build it out. Right. So what are some of the easy ways for them to start building those systems out mm -hmm. without them, you know, overwhelming themselves? So I'd say the first thing you can do is start with a resource gap analysis and what that is, is looking at every department in your business. You're going to look at your administration. Mm -hmm. You're going to look at your marketing. You're going to look at your financials, or not your financial numbers per se, but who's in charge of finance, what that looks like for you, um, HR. And you start listing out all the resources that you would need for your yeah. business to be successful. Then you start looking at all the resources that you actually have right now that you can address some of those things. Mm -hmm. Once you look at what you need and what you have, you'll see the gap. Then when you see the gap, you start writing out what those gaps are and then put a plan in place to address those gaps. Mm -hmm. So this is what I need. This is what I have. These are my gaps. And within the next year, I plan to address this gap. Maybe in the next two years, I can address this gap. Mm -hmm. Once that is in place and you can start seeing it and it won't feel so overwhelming. Mm. So for your business, do you have a template you give to your clients? You say, hey, this is a resource gap name all the different resources and then it's I like do. a you do eh? Of so course. it's like a framework you provide of course okay <laughs> so uh, which leads to my next thing right in business school when i was at ryerson mm -hmm. we was talked about business planning and this is something that you are an expert in okay and there's also strategy yes so a lot of people especially even when i was working uh in corporate we talk about strategy you got to be strategic you got to be strategic like it's thrown on this freely yeah how do you define strategy? Like, what is a strategy and what is having a business plan? What's so, the difference between the two? Hmm, that's a really good question. And if I were to define them, I'd say having a business plan is just really getting a lay of the land mm -hmm. of what it will take to run the business. What is it going to take to get my business off the ground, get it running, get it successful? Having a strategy is... After I know what it takes to run the business, where am I looking to go with this business? Right? Because not everybody's trying to run a multi-million dollar enterprise or yeah. a conglomerate or be, you know, something of that nature. Maybe they're just trying to generate hundred thousand dollars in their business and they'll have a strategy to get there. So when I know, okay, to run this business, it's going to need, let's say I'm doing a bakery. I'm gonna need an assistant baker. I'm gonna need a shop. I'm gonna need an oven. I'm gonna need a little bit of marketing. I'm gonna need some clients. I'm gonna need this. Now, if I want to have three bakeries in the next five years, how do I multiply this to get to that? Mm -hmm. And that's where the strategy comes in. I'm gonna to have to generate this much in revenue. I'm gonna to have to locate another um, location. I'm gonna to have to locate another location. Maybe I need to get a business coach or something mm -hmm. like that to help me figure this out. But that's where the strategy part of it comes in and how I'm trying to grow to the next level. Yeah, so from what I'm hearing is having a strategy actually involves quantitative methods to actually get there. Because when you talk about strategy, you can just say, yeah, strategy is we're gonna attack this, then we're gonna do that, then do that, and blah, blah, blah. But there's actually numbers that support this. Absolutely. It's like certain triggers, you got to hit this and yep. then do that. But the thing is, is con 
continuously hitting those triggers to release other things to actually make that strategy yes. in place. You'd have to do that. Mm. Yeah. And you know, the thing is, I, when I think about strategy, especially for small time entrepreneurs, they're thinking tactics, right? So there's tactics and then there's strategy. Mm -hmm. And I think we often confuse this is a tactic for me to grow our social media following to this, or this is a tactic to do this. But we confuse that with strategy. And I've I've made that mistakes, mistake countless times is thinking, hey, we have a strategy. But ultimately, when you look at it, bro, you're just using some certain tactics just to get to a means to an end. But mm -hmm. after that end is reached, what's next? What's next? And that's where the strategy comes in. Yeah. Thinking about the what's next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you just mentioned something that I found interesting was a. Uh, getting a business coach mm -hmm. you know let's talk about that because every five seconds on socials you see coach 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 yeah. i'm a life coach i'm a business coach i'm a financial coach i'm a fitness coach i'm a this coach mm -hmm. so let's talk about the purposes of a business coach you know have you hired one before no not no? for my business per se okay but more life strategies so i've life hired strategy. like a life coach interesting yeah how'd that work out for you it was really good because, you know, sometimes you're in it so thick mm -hmm. that you can't see certain things. So it's great to have an outside perspective mm -hmm. on how to manage life and business because it could get a bit overwhelming and it's OK to get help. Mm -hmm. It is OK to ask for help. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Honestly, I'm like, there should be a, like a, a life coach for like, like black men around our age. I mm. feel like there's like a big gap. Of like, yeah. of guys are on our age, just not knowing where to go in life. Because we hear yeah. for women too, like black women. Th there's a lot of um, support groups. There's a lot of incubators. A lot of different groups that are there, mm -hmm. um, and rightfully so. Like that's amazing. But I think Alex and I have always spoke about this. There should be like a, you know, like a, the, the say black girl boss babes or something like that. There's yeah. there's something along those lines. Yeah. But for black men, we also need to celebrate ourselves. And I mm -hmm. think certain things like this would be great for young boys and in, in, in primary school and high school just to make them think about success in other ways that are not really the common ways of like entertainment or athletics. Yes, I agree with that. I agree 100% with that. Maybe you guys should start that. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Developing the platform. You know, developing yeah. the audience. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You know, and let me get your opinion on, on something else too, because it's something we've been doing behind the scenes. So I'll, so I'll we'll let the audience in. You know, we've been thinking about dropping a, a, a series. You know, we actually dropped um, like a edited series uh, two years ago called mm -hmm. BWBU, Black Women Bossed Up, because we, we realized that there was like a kind of a gap of men that actually sh like highlight black women, mm -hmm. right? And we're thinking about doing it over again, but we realized there's a lot of opportunities right now for, for black women. And we're like, would it be, I guess, you know, pandering? to have another one drop, you know? When I, when I, when I talk, tell you about that, hey, we're gonna drop another series called BWBU2. Mm -hmm. How does that ring in your eyes? I think it's great. The more support we get, the better. Mm. And it's more for black women, you're saying? This yeah. series that you're gonna drop? Yeah. We need all the support that we can get because we're working, we're women, mm -hmm. we're black, right? It's like almost like a double minority. It's a double whammy, yeah. yeah in, mm -hmm. the, in the system's eyes mm -hmm. that we have to work against. So all the support that we can get from our male counterparts mm -hmm. um, to help us showcase our business, highlight our businesses, that would be phenomenal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I've done, a, I've been part of a study called Found Hers where we looked at black female entrepreneurs across Canada. And a lot of the times we need assistance, we need mentorship, we need support. And if the men in our community would support us and highlight our businesses, because even though you're black men, you're still men at the mm -hmm. end of the day. So some doors might open faster for you than it would open for us because we're seem, deemed to be like, oh, well, what if you have kids or, you know, do you, are you going to have time? And, you know, do you have the capacity to handle that? And how do you how do you have, manage work life balance? Has anybody ever asked you that? Mm. Yes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm trolling. That's the degree. No, no, I'm trolling. Right? Chilling, Men chilling. don't get asked, like, you know, how no. do you manage, like, life and business? You don't mm -hmm. really get asked those questions, but we manage a lot and we are capable. Mm -hmm. A lot of times men, um, the strong men, I find, would be fa first to admit that it's the women in their life that help support them, which is the reason why they can do what they can do mm -hmm. because they can't handle home and business and doing all this stuff. And meanwhile, we're doing it all. This podcast is brought to you by Nyorai Cellars. If you didn't know, Nyorai Cellars is the only Black-owned wine company in Canada. Right now, I'm holding the Rosé, the 2021 Rosé bottle. This drink is amazing. 
I mean, it's perfect for those dishes such as seafood where you're cooking shrimp, you're having some pasta, whatever it is you're having. Grab a bottle of you know, rice cellars, the rosé. If you're having a date night with your significant other, you know what to grab. Grab the nurai. Whatever it is, grab the nurai. I mean, you will not go wrong with this wine. It's perfect for everybody. If you've never drank wine, this is a great bottle for you. Or even if you're a wine expert, you're an aficionado and you drink everything. I mean, you cannot go in your eye. I'm telling you, this wine is really, really good. And even though I'm boosting it this hard, it's because I really love drinking it. And I'm someone who loves to drink wine. So whatever it is, whatever the special occasion, check on your eye. They have... Sauvignon Blancs, they have Rieslings, I'm holding the Rosé right now. They have a wide variety of different collections of different wines you can choose from. Make sure to check them out. The link is going to be in the description. Check them out, order a crate for yourself, or you can uh, send a gift to someone that you want to give um, some wine to. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. So in your rice cellars, check them out. Link will be in the description. And I'm back to the show. So uh, having men in our lives help support and showcase all the things that we could do and that we're capable of. Yeah. I think that's a great thing. Yeah. Um and to, to your point, I think what, what happens a lot of times as a, as a society, we, you know, like prescribe or, you know, we place home duties on women a lot of the time. So it, it makes it uh, like a, a bit of a confusion to be like, so you're going to do the, your home duties and do all this on top of it, you know? <laughs> so so it kind of, you know, puts bias in people's minds. Mm-hmm. It could. And, yeah. and even on that, like with your husband, I'm curious, um, how long have you been married, by the way? 16 years, 17 shout, uh, in shout September. Yeah. Shout out to him. What's his name? <laughs> his name's Ian. Ian. Yes. So how has Ian supported you through like your career? Uh, and this is for like the man listening. Just mm-hmm. think, you know, you are, you've been flourishing in your business for some time now. Yes. How has that support and what are some of the things that he did to support you early on? Ian is amazing. I can't even begin to list the things that he does to support me. Ian, mm-hmm. there's no... Um, false pride in him in terms of we he understands we are a team and we work as a team Mm -hmm. my husband could cook my husband cleans my husband is he's also a barber he runs his own barbershops he's an entrepreneur too so he understands what it takes to To run a business business. and build a business as well right he does my son's hair he'll go to work he'll come home he helps out with the baby he'll do things so that i can get a rest when i wanted to go and do my mba and i wanted to quit my job my husband was like you're brilliant you quit that job I, I got this. I will hold it down so you can get to the next level. Because he knows when I get to the next level, we are at the next level. Mm-hmm. So there's no, oh, this is your duty and this is my duty. He will do the laundry. He will do things like everything is shared. Yeah. So we don't feel like there's gender. There's no gender roles in my home. Mm-hmm. We do what needs to be done to get us both to the next level because we're doing it for each other. We're doing it for our family. Gotcha. And I'm so grateful that I have a husband who is like that and will support me no matter what I do mm-hmm. and is there and has my back 100% and takes care of the kids and feels no way about it. Mm-hmm. And I I wish I wish that for every woman. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's uh I, I can I can hear a woman like listening to this and being like, "God, I'm crying out." <laughs> <laughs> They're just looking up to the sky like, you hear this? (laughs) They exist. Yeah. (laughs) It sounds like a unicorn, you know? You know, he he is, and that's why I kind of keep him away. (laughs) Mm -hmm. There's women out here poaching, eh? Probably. He's pretty, too, so, you know? (laughs) He's a handsome guy. Very. (laughs) (laughs) So on that, that, which leads me to the next thing. Like, now you're talking about your husband and um, planning for success. Planning is something that you do. How are you planning to raise your kids and putting them in a path to success and whatever path they choose. Like it doesn't have to be business, but Mm -hmm. internally, what are you doing to uh, position them to succeed in life? Really? It's just helping them understand and believe in themselves and their abilities. Mm -hmm. I don't expect them to do what I did. This is my path. Mm -hmm. Everybody's born with their own gifts. My son, he's great in basketball. That is his gift. The only thing I ask of him is like, you understand how to read your contracts and you understand how to count your money. I don't want anybody robbing you. I don't want anybody, you know, making you sign things that you did not read or agree to or understand. Mm -hmm. Once you can do those two things and more power to you, Mm -hmm. right? Because mommy doesn't want anybody taking advantage of you. I'm not going to be here forever to read all your contracts and count your money. So I need you to do this for yourself. And I support him that way. As for my daughter, I want her to see and grow up in a household where she sees there are no gender roles. 
right? You can find a partner that can help you and support mm -hmm. you in this way when she looks at her dad. Yeah. You, your mom is here and yes, I'm here with you and I'm home and I'm able to do this, but I'm also running a successful business mm -hmm. and you can do that too if that's what you want. And if it's not what you want, whatever it is that you do, believe in yourself. You are magic. You are amazing. Everybody has their own gifts. Don't follow the crowd. Be a leader. Do your thing. If everybody wants to go that way and you want to go this way by yourself, go. Yes. Right. Take the path least traveled. If there's no one there, there's no traffic. Mm -hmm. So go on that road. Yeah. Follow your dream. This is your life. When you close your eyes at the end of your life, you're closing it by yourself. Mm -hmm. No one's jumping in that hole with you. You're alone. So make sure whatever it is that you do is to make yourself happy. And that's really all I want for them. Yeah. To have live happy and full lives. In control. Yeah. Oh, that's a that's a big gem. So when it comes to, you know, trying to pivot fit back on business, because, you know, we're a business pod, <laughs> you know. What are some of the fundamental pillars when it comes to creating a good brand for your business? You know, like, what are some of the things that you consistently see as threads that your successful clients do? So when they're doing marketing, per se? Yeah, yeah. Or when they're building their brand? So consistency. Mm -hmm. Consistency with their content, consistency with their message. Everything is working cohesively throughout. Mm -hmm. Right. And I realized that the successful clients who are doing that, they're seeing it over and over again. And it starts to build on top of that and letting yeah. people know who you are. When they see this brand, they know exactly that what it's about, what it speaks to. And that's really um, when I say to my clients, we work on your business model canvas, looking at your business model and layout of it. That helps with figuring out who you need to be speaking to. And once you drill down on who you need to be speaking to, you start to see success in that regard mm. and having that laid out for you in a plan, right? So you can understand how that's going. I think that's really what helps them. So being consistent with their messaging all the time. And I have my marketing and communications person. So if that's not what you're actually good at, get somebody mm -hmm. <laughs> who does that and help have them look at an outside perspective of your business to help you with that marketing and communications. Definitely getting more media, doing things like this, right? exactly. getting out a podcast, talking on talking hustle, about, hustle over everything, talking about talking on hustle over everything, speak about your business. Any opportunity you can get to speak about your business is good. The reason why people started calling me, especially during the pandemic, before the pandemic, I was out there speaking at every event I could speak at. I was on stages. I was doing workshops. Mm -hmm. I was doing everything that I can do. And then when they thought business plan or when they needed a business plan to apply for funding that was happening throughout that time, it's Chantel, it's CQBC. It's, you know, this is what I need because I did a great job of letting people know exactly what it is that I did and getting out there and doing that. Not all marketing things you have to pay for per se, but it will cost you time. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have money, find some time. Yeah. Yeah. Got you. And on that on that with business plans, um, over the past, let's say, decade, there's been the concept of the canvas plan, the lean canvas. Yeah. And the way that it's taught now is that traditional business planning is seen as something that's very archaic, it's static. <laughs> a lean canvas. Oh, let's see what the bank. A lean canvas is more dynamic. Uh -huh. You can look at, okay, problem, solve, uh, solution. Uh, this is the marketing plan. This is the revenue streams. And then you attack and you build an MVP where if I was building a plan, I'm writing my executive summary. Yeah. I'm writing all these different things. Yes. And the thing is, what they're challenging is that once you actually put that into motion, all that plan, all that planning, maybe it's say it's like a five to 10 page business plan, mm -hmm. all goes down the window because you don't know what's going to be coming your way. Mm -hmm. So how do you challenge that for someone who actually does business planning but the new age entrepreneur these days is doing a lot more lean, lean canvas canvas. and business canvases. Um, so I find that people avoid doing the detailed business plan because it's a lot of work mm. and they don't want to necessarily do all of that work. So to just get a quick lay of the land, yes, the lean canvas is a great tool. At least you have some, some form of a plan, mm -hmm. right? When you want to go for funding, or you want to get investor consideration, you come to find out these financial institutions are archaic and they want the detailed plan that you necessarily didn't want to write. So if you're not looking for funding from anybody and you just want to have an idea for yourself, fine, lean canvas all the way. But if you're looking for funding from some type of an institution, you have to have a detailed plan. They want to know that you've done the marketing um, research. They want to know that you have a financial forecast, right? Two years minimum. They want to know that what your operations are going to look like. They want to understand your team. They want to understand your vision. And it's going to be more than five pages 
definitely. So if you're looking for some type of funding opportunity, you're going to need the detailed plan. Mm. It is what it is. Mm. You know, mm. I, I, I like that. It sounds good in theory, but I always find it just, especially because not everyone's applying for funding. Like it reaches, you have to yeah. have like a solid business model for some time mm-hmm. um, and actually achieve profit and actually get to market fit, customer and product market fit. Mm-hmm. Then you can do that. So are you advising that start off with a lean canvas first or do you start with a business plan from day one? Depends on what your strategy is. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Right. It depends on what your strategy is. If you foresee yourself eventually wanting to get funding, then I would start with the business plan because you could just tweak certain things in that mm-hmm. and apply for it. You won't have to sit there for the hours on end to do it because you did it first. Mm-hmm. If you don't see yourself looking for funding and you plan to bootstrap and self fund your business the whole way through, then do the lean canvas mm-hmm. because it's just really for you. It's not for anybody else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is so there's so much, you know, different strategies and when it comes to getting funding, like it feels like golden handcuffs, you know. Like we just we just interviewed Mark LaFleur and talked about his journey and with his exit, because he didn't have as much investors, he got the lion's share of the exit because he didn't take much funding. It wasn't and it wasn't because he wasn't trying to get funding, it's because he wasn't getting it. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, it kind of gives you, you know, a pause before you actually apply for funding because of the different, you know, um, advantages or disadvantages you might have when it comes to it. So in your opinion, what would be the cause to go for funding and um, versus bootstrapping in your opinion? So it depends on when you're doing your research, right? If you want to, let me, let me, let me get the right words for this. When you're doing your research for your business and you see that there is a certain direction that you want to go, and yes, you're able to go along and you're generating some revenue, but there's something that you want to invest in and it's going to cost way more money than your revenue is bringing in, but you know it's going to exacerbate your business, right? You're going to have tremendous growth if you get this particular thing, but you just need, let's say, a million dollars right now to get it. That would be something that you would look for funding for and you could potentially get, you know, negotiate with somebody, I'll give you 20% of my business if I get this particular funding because I expect that once I get this, mm-hmm. the revenue is going to be, you know, exponential. Mm-hmm. And that would be a reason to to do that and mm-hmm. to look for that. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, maybe it's, you know, not in your best interest. And I find a lot of people, especially in our black community, we're not really big on looking for funding or trying to get funding because that's the that's the thought process. If we do sell, if something does happen, we want we don't want the handcuffs. We don't want to be beholden to anybody. We yeah. don't want to take on too much debt because we're not sure where this is going to go. And if it is great and we do sell it, we want to ha- retain most of the funds. Mm-hmm. But if you see a lot of these successful businesses and multi-million dollar corporations, they all got that way because they took on funding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think it's, uh, it's a mentality where People would rather have 100% of the pie of something that is worth, let's say, give or take for nice numbers, $100,000. Mm-hmm. Or you can have, like, let's say, 20% of something that is worth, like, $10 million, right? Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So, like, the more even if you dilute yourself, the more you actually you're actually gaining in the long term because of there's a lot more at stake. There's a lot more people who are invested here. But I think the element of control that you're losing along the process, a lot of people don't want to deal with that. So it goes back to the fact that what kind of business do you want to build from day one? Is it going to be a lifestyle business? Is it going to be a hobby? Is it going to be a venture capital Mm -hmm. business in the future? And I think these are the things that even when you're planning from day one, it's actually understanding where do we want to go? I always say, Start with the end in mind. Yes. Where do you want to be when it's all said and done? What kind of organization do you want to be? There's actually um, a story with IBM. I forgot the founder's name, but when you're starting IBM, he asked himself, what kind of company do we want to operate in if this was 1990? Mm -hmm. This is like when IBM is like day one, day one, right? Like, right. So how would a company like that operate today? So when you ask yourself, this company operates like this, 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 and that, if that's the scale, what do we do today to operate at that level, yeah. even though we're not there? So you're actually implementing the habits of a multi-billion dollar organization when you're worth 
let's say a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And those habits, everyone who comes into your business, your employees, your customers, they see how you're operating and they treat it that, like that. And you even attract investors because structurally you've gone the end vision in mind and you're mm-hmm. implementing the steps from day one. I agree with that. That is a very great yeah, that I gotta find. Great perspective. Gotta find the story as we're talking. And even when I think, like, when you're building your business, are you building to keep it or are you building to sell? Mm-hmm. Right. What What is it that you want to do with it? And if you're building to sell, then, like you said, if I'm getting to keep thirty percent, forty percent of a ten million dollar yeah. business, I have three, four million dollars. Do I want a hundred percent of a hundred thousand? Give me thirty or forty percent of mm-hmm. the ten million dollar business. I, if I built it once, I could probably go do something else again. Mm-hmm. But I have more money now to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And thinking along those terms. Yeah. And the founder is actually Tom Watson. Okay. Watson, IBM. Yeah. Actually, the Watsons have owned IBM for like a while. There's, there's been many Watsons in the in the, <laughs> in the the whole IBM empire for some time. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. What are you looking to do more so? Are you looking to build or looking to sell? If I'm, oh, sorry. Are you looking to build to keep or building to sell? For now, I'm building to keep. Mm. Like I said, I have kids and I'm not sure if they'd want to carry on my legacy. I do not. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not pushing it onto them. I'm not like, okay, this is what you have to do. You have to carry on the family business. But for now, it's built to keep. Mm. I love what it is that I do. And I love getting to help people realize their dreams. I love getting to help people build their businesses. That actually brings me joy. Mm-hmm. So if I sell it, then it's kind of like, well, what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. Right? So for now, I'm building it to keep. But as I get older, and maybe I want to slow down, or maybe I realize my children don't want to take this over, I might start looking to sell what to it is sell. that I have. Yeah. Um, I'm curious when you're consulting with all these businesses, mm-hmm. a lot of them are mature businesses. What are some common things that you notice across all industries that make businesses stall? Um, they're not growing, they're just every single year, they're just steady, same revenue. Just plateauing. Plateauing, yeah. exactly. What are the common things that cause businesses to plateau? Uh, Maybe they don't want to change with the times. Mm. I saw a lot of that happening. So see how when COVID happened, Mm. those who are already online were able to pivot really quickly. But those who didn't think having an online presence would have been, you know, beneficial to their business were now scrambling to figure out how to get an online presence. Mm. Well, now there's a lot of noise and no one's going to hear you. Right. So businesses that are not willing to change what it is that they're doing are like, well, why change? This has been working for a while. And then now you're forced to change. Mm -hmm. So I think always looking to change with the times, always see what's happening, what trends are happening, and how can I implement this into my business? Not every trend is going to be for your business, but just doing an analysis of what you're doing now, what's happening now, and how that can work within your business. And if you have a plan, then you could go back to it and see, so this is what we plan to do. This is what we're doing, right? This is what's happening now. And there's something that I use with my clients called a pastel analysis. I'm not sure if you know what that is. Yeah, I did. You did the pastel analysis, right? What's that? So it's looking at the political environment, economic, social, technological, environmental, and legal environment. That's all the external things that are happening Mm -hmm. in your industry, Mm -hmm. right? And how those things could affect your business. And sometimes those things change, especially when we get to social. We didn't have social media, like, you know, maybe 20, 30 years ago when people were doing businesses. They didn't Mm -hmm. know that, you know, you had to get on TV and have like a multi-million dollar commercial to be seen. Now you don't need all of that. So things are changing with business Mm -hmm. and looking at the environment that you're in now and going to your pastel analysis and being like, okay, this is what used to be in the technological area. This is what used to be social. Now these two things have changed, but political is still the same. Economic is still the same. Legal is still the same. But these two dynamics need need a bit of a tweak. What's happening here? Okay, this is what's happening now. And how can this apply to my business? How can I change and do things in my business so that it applies to what's happening now? Mm So that's why having a business plan and having these things written out in detail can help you go and just figure out maybe I just need to change this line. Yeah. I don't need to change the whole thing. Yeah. And even when we're when we're doing pastel analysis, there's a SWOT analysis that kind of complements at the same time, right? Yes. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, when they're doing the SWOT analysis, they're thinking strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and and threats Mm -hmm. are internal. No, they're not. You know, so (laughs) when you look at external threats and opportunities exist. Yeah. So a threat could be not adapting with the times of like yeah. adopting a new way of thinking, adopting Absolutely. a new technology. And, you know, it's shifting that thinking when we're doing SWOT analysis, especially day one, you're thinking, okay, this is a threat to business internally. This mm-hmm. is an opportunity. Hey, we can maybe use a different fabric for this kind of <laughs> pant. <laughs> That's not an opportunity. No, it's not. An opportunity would be like, you know what? We're making these clothes. There's an opportunity to make these type of pants for elderly people Mm -hmm. because they don't have the best comfort when they're chilling at home. 
That's exactly. an opportunity. Yeah. So now actually we can find a way in our plan to realign, to attack that opportunity. The threat might be China or these factories are not giving us favorable pricing. Mm. The, the fabric might not be available mm. and we're not going to be able to produce. So what are the other options? Exactly. So you find business is actually war when you think about <laughs> it. Huh. Yes, that's in a that, fact. In that, yeah. The microchips right now, you yeah. know, what's, you, you heard. What's yes, going I have on? heard what's going on with the what's microchips. Going on? Bro, so Taiwan. All right, so basically, Taiwan made the sickest play years ago, mm. and uh, basically, Japan used to sell microchips, and America was like, "You trying to sell microchips, fam? The, the the chips that we all need, that our whole society needs, everything. Ban and ban all of Japan. So now Taiwan sees that and is like, "Oh, if we do that, they gonna." They're going to smack us down. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, you know what we're going to do? we going, hey, oh, America, y'all want some microchips? We'll make them for you, no problem. And they started making microchips for all of America mm. and China. So they have, like, the 90% like of microchips are made in Taiwan, mm -hmm. which gives them huge leverage. Yes, it does. Right? So this is li literal business equals war. And yeah. now... China wants to t overtake Taiwan, but, China, but America's like, nah, fam, that's not. We're not that. getting in. We need them. <laughs> like, we, need, we need those microchips. We need exactly. them chips. We need them chips. Yeah. So, so no matter what, that's why Nancy Pelosi was in Taiwan yeah. a few months back, you know, because they're like, nah, we're going to protect this asset, Yeah. you know? And um, what was crazy, too, is that um, the way it's made is that they don't actually design and, like, com give them a full package. They give them, like, the hard labor of it like the, not the labor but like the hard raw materials of the microchip and then it's designed and produced in america mm. so they don't have full leverage but like a, still a very strong leverage mm. right so what's happened now though is that china found a a, a weak link or a kind of a hack where they actually would buy microchips from american businesses mm. under the guise of hey we just want some microchips for, for our businesses and started using that for their army so now, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. That's, so, a, that's strategy. That's right, about to say. <laughs> <laughs> that is strategy. That is strategy. <laughs> that is strategy. <laughs> Big facts. So, so, so right now, like in play, we're seeing Biden like chip, like snip off mm -hmm. all of those opportunities for China. So they're, they're controlling the microchips of the world, you know? So literal business equals war. Everyone, the thing, I, I always say business is the greatest sport ever. Like I thought, you know, you're playing basketball you're playing whatever <laughs> but business is 365 24 7 no it. shot clock and when there's some kid in another country trying to kick your ass yep like every single second of the day so if you're not making if you're not producing if you're not doing and you're not and you're stuck in your ways <laughs> you're stuck in the same yeah, play yeah, yeah. like the one that's gone shoot buckets but yeah the game is changing you're not you're gonna need to play differently you're going to be left behind. This is why I love business. It's it's like mental gymnastics. It's mental gymnastics. I love it. Mm. Yeah. It's stimulating. Yeah. Where is it rooted for you? Do your parents have businesses? Like where that where do you think that that seed is for you? No. Um my parents work traditional jobs for the most part, especially mm. my grandmothers mm. and when I said I want to go off and be an entrepreneur, they're kind of like, ah, "But you know, you need benefits and you need this." I'm like, "You know what? Money's a benefit." I'm going to go get some of that and <laughs> yeah. I'm going to just live life on my own terms. Yeah. And I'm not saying that jobs aren't great because I've had jobs to help me along the way. I had jobs while I was going to school. Mm -hmm. I had jobs to help me, you know, with the consistency of generating income while I built this. But at the same time, I had this thing inside of me that I wanted to do something of my own. I wanted to create. I wanted the freedom to create because in jobs, sometimes they limit you. You're like, oh, no, you're at this level and this is all the thinking we need you to do. Thanks. But my brain is <laughs> more expansive than that. I needed to use more than just this piece they wanted me to use. I wanted to help people. I knew that I had gifts and talents that I came to this world with that I wanted to share with others. And even going to school and studying, and I love school. I love learning. I love, you know, maybe that's why I love doing business plans because it gets gives me a chance to study and, and also research and structure. Learn. It yeah. seems like you like structure a I lot. I do. Yeah. I do. Are you a Capricorn? No. No, you're not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you had it too. I thought I had it. I was like, boom. I hit it with that one. This is the finish. Shot it, shot it. I turned around. He was like, You know that Nick Young? Uh, yeah, when Nick he's Young like, is like, yeah, I'm going to hit it. I'm like, all right, nah. Damn. No. So when, when is your birthday? May 24th. I'm a Gemini. Oh, Gemini. Oh, yeah, shout out to Gemini. Shout out to Gemini. You're Gemini? Yeah, I'm yeah, a Gemini. Yeah, May, June. Oh, yeah. June 1st. Yes, you are. Yes, yes, yes. I'm my like good friend, June 1st, too. I'm like a Gemini, Gemini. June 1st is like, you know. My brother's May 31st. 
31st. So he's like, oh, right, way right before. There. Okay. Yeah. All right. To be honest, my brothers and I were all Gemini's. Get out of here. Yeah. Wow. My, my okay. mom planned it that way. She likes us. <laughs> did you ask <laughs> her, like, well, were you planning this? She did plan it. She you told me. It. Yes. Yes. Wow. She knew exactly what needed to happen when so mm-hmm. that she gets Gemini. Her mom's a Gemini too. So my grandmothers, both my grandmothers actually are Gemini's. Wow. My siblings and I are Gemini's. So and, it's like the flow of all your interactions just like seamless because I feel like they always say <laughs> people who are like, let's say Capricorn and Capricorn, yeah. they can get along. So how's your family dynamic? Do you all just gel? My because, brothers and I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're of one mind, right? Mm. We're all ambitious. We like to do our own thing. My one brother plays basketball. Another one has his own um, animation company. He's an entrepreneur as well. Wow. And then there's me who does business planning and strategy. So when we get together, it's always, first of all, Gemini's like to talk a lot. So it's always us talking on, all over each other. My husband likes to sit there and look at us. He's like, is anybody even listening? Mm-hmm. Like, you're all just doing a lot of talking. <laughs> um, so we, we get together in that regard and we think alike too. We're always thinking ahead, st- strategizing, planning. Where are we going? What are we going to do? How are we going to get there? How do we help each other? Yeah. And we love to work together. So, And my mom just loves that about us. Mm-hmm. She she loves that. So mm-hmm. so what what is your background? Jamaican? No. Um, my mom's from Trinidad and my dad's from St. Vincent. Okay. Okay, okay. So Caribbean. Yes. You know, Caribbean. awesome, awesome. So you like your doubles, your roti, you know? Oh, yes. Uh, I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, my my uh, grandfather-in-law is from St. Vincent. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I have a little bit of sin. Wonderful sin, related. You know, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> You never know. You never know. Such a small island. I have to yeah. find out. I'll call my grandmother and be like, okay, do you know this last name? Because that's how we do it. She'll really? be like, yeah, that last name, they're from this part and they're from the leeward side or the windward side. And I know this and I know that. Yeah. yeah. I'm not familiar with like St. Vincent or anything, but what is the population of, of the of I'm going to have to Google that, but it's not that big. Yeah. It's like over like 5 million, 10 million. Oh, no. Uh, it's a small it's island? A small, yes. Small local, local thing. Mm. Um, as you do that, um, it's funny you mentioned that with the last names. I had a similar story where... Uh, 104,000. 104,000. That's tiny. <laughs> it must be a great vacation spot. It's beautiful. Yeah, you go back there? I've been back, yes. Yeah. So not as often as I'd like, but mm-hmm. I want to acquire some land there and look to the future of building something and just being there part-time. Well, in the you know, optimal future, what would you want to build? Nothing too big, just probably a nice three-bedroom home so that my kids could come. My family already has property close to the water, so if I could acquire something nearby, mm. um, just be – there's an actual street that my family lives on called Quao Street. So if yeah, I could get I, something yeah. on Quao mm-hmm. Street, being a Quao myself, um, I'd love that. That'd be hard. You know, <laughs> they walk on the family back and be like, oh, mom, dude. <laughs> What? It's what? all family here, <laughs> literally. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. late. Actually, I had a similar situation. So um, my grandfather bought a spot in Rochester. Back in Rochester was flourishing. And it was like a little crescent. But the way the street was, it felt like a private street. Mm-hmm. So the name on it was Whitfield. Ooh. So and I was driving on it. I was like, hold on, what? <laughs> Mom, we have a street <laughs> in Rochester. You're you got lying. Gas. Bro, I was so gassed. I was like, I felt like like, you know, dust my like, shoulders off. Yeah. Like, what? Like this is mine. Now. This is this is hard. This, Claim that. You know, most definitely. Yeah. But as you get to as you work towards wrapping up, yeah. you know, um I, first off, this is a great conversation. It yes. was. It really know? flowed very nicely. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Listen, this is what we do. We we professional professionals. professionals. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> All right. So as you look towards the future, you know, what are some of the, as we've seen that I did the business tip of the week, you know, doing some predictions, what are some of your predictions that you have for the upcoming years and, you know, where you see business going? I see the online trend continuing. Mm. Um, a lot of people are, I hear, are trying to fight to go back to the office, but I don't think that's going to be happening. People have gotten a bit of that freedom of working from home I or like working the office. anywhere. You like the office? I love the office. The show? No. <laughs> I, 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 I. Being in the office. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Show. So that was good. Oh, that was good stuff. That was yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. But I like the camaraderie of the office. Yeah, some people do, and some people like the freedom of being able to work mm-hmm. from anywhere. My team, we're mostly virtual. Even though we're all in Toronto, we're virtual, and we build our camaraderie online. We have team meetings where we get together every Monday morning, and we don't chat about anything work. Yeah. Talk about what were you doing this weekend? What are you doing with your life? What do you want to do? What are some things we could do together? And those kind of things. So you can still build a culture, even mm-hmm. though you're not necessarily always together. Um, and some people don't really like the commute. I really love that I could 
wake up at 1045 and be working by 11 o'clock and everything's great. Whereas before when I was working uh, downtown, I'd have that one hour commute before, one hour commute after. I'm working eight hours. That's 10 hours out of my day. I got, you know, like when you start counting it in that way, that's two hours I could have been more productive. Mm. So it all depends on how you look at it. You know, my issue, Chantel, is this. It's like I like the feeling of coming back home and saying, this is home. This is my oasis. This is what I'm, this is my like place. Mm -hmm. But then when I go to work, that's why I'm in the work mode. I'm like, I'm working, I'm doing my thing. I'm with my team. And I, I don't think it's necessarily the office. I like the fact that you have a purpose when you wake up to go to a destination to get a job done. Okay. So it doesn't really have to be the office. It could be like a workspace where yeah. I can actually get dressed. I can feel serious. I'm like, <laughs> you don't feel serious? <laughs> I, I, you know, even even at home, I like to wear pants. I like to wear um, uh, sweaters. Mm -hmm. I feel polos. Polos. I've been on calls with Alex and he's like, bro, like, are you wearing a... I'm like, yes. I, I do that. You do that, right? Yeah, I get... But, when I'm doing things with clients, I get I get my... I make up. I but get you, dressed. Do you fully, like, dress psychologically to feel like... Let's say if it's, like, some trousers or something like that, like a skirt. Yeah, I would... I you wear, do that. I wear a nice dress. Yeah, I put myself together. Okay, so great. We agreed <laughs> on that. But the thing is, I like the fact that I'm going to a place to conduct a task that is worth, like, for my business or for, for work. And then coming back home, I can change in my sweatpants. Now I'm in my leisure time. Okay, okay. I just don't like feeling like leisurely when I'm conducting business <laughs> duties. <laughs> I understand. It just, it just doesn't feel right to me. I understand. I yeah. understand. And yeah, yeah. maybe, you know, not everybody would like the work from home vibe. But I'm mm -hmm. finding that there is a trend to where more people are preferring that. There are going to be still some like you who want to go somewhere. Yeah. And that's why they probably have a bit of a hybrid. Maybe you go to the office two, three that's days true. a week. And then the other two days you can work from home or work from a coffee shop. Work from wherever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm so hybrid. I got to love a good hybrid where you maybe like once every two weeks you meet on the Thursday mm -hmm. and then you have like a team meeting where you all have like the brainstorms and things yeah. of that nature. Yeah. I think that is like the optimal thing so everyone can be accountable and have a space where they can build together as a, as a team. But, yeah, working from home, I think, is great because traveling is a bitch. In Toronto, you know? especially. In Toronto, yeah. I was yeah. going to say, but I was like, nah, I need to hear the beat. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> you gotta, is. You got to feel me. Out <laughs> it, it is. Like, it you is. You know, like, yeah. like, yeah, the other day, I, I, um, I was in the subway, and then I, I had, like, a baby next to me crying, and, and the subway packed up, and I was like, fam, I don't miss this. <laughs> I do not miss this. But you, you get to all. hear the sights and sounds of the city, though. Don't you like that? Bro, underground? Hell no. <laughs> don't you like the, the subway no. just like, doo, doo. No. I, 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 don't, I don't miss that. I don't miss it. I don't like, miss that. I, I like the Toronto sounds. And listen, no, listen. The sounds is fine, but then <laughs> when it gets packed up, go, go, oh go my for the sounds gosh. at, at Rush 4 o'clock. Rush yeah, hour when everybody's smushed, smushed like that. Smushed together? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for the sounds at 8.30 yeah, and yeah. see how you feel. <laughs> of the streetcar just like, choo, 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 choo. like there's certain sounds of Toronto oh like gosh. I love, like even Young Dundas or um, what are the sounds of the city that you let's say here the go train or something like that just it makes you feel as if like you're living in the city <laughs> yeah, I, I love the romance my guy i love the romance yeah i'm not there the city, i'm not there with you on that one believe in the city believe in yourselves that's what my Sai said oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my <laughs> when he's asking like can we get like free agents to come here then he just got pissed he told the media believe in the city believe in yourselves you all of here you need to believe in yourselves I felt it because okay. we have such an inferiority complex, especially in Toronto mm -hmm. with our sports teams. It's like we don't feel stars can come here. But Masai is like, believe in the city. Stars believe. love here. They love to come and party here, but they don't stay, Chantel. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a thing. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't want to stay. Maybe their families don't want to stay. That's true. Right? Maybe they personally would love mm -hmm. to stay, but the family's like, you know, I, yeah. I have other family back home. I want to be near to them. You know, I need yeah. the help. I need this. So yeah, yeah. The way the way I picture it in my mind is like, where you where you gonna go to a party? Like, oh, you going to Toronto? I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Where are you gonna go live? It's like Toronto. It's like Toronto. Toronto. <laughs> it's like I'm going back to LA, man. <laughs> Toronto. <laughs> uh, and then that's how I look at it, yo. But yo, thanks so much for joining the show, yo. That's Chantel. You know, I think you absolutely bodied it. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is what you can control. So control your grind and control your life. I'm Alex. And I'm Owen Osinde. And I'm Chantal Quayle. Thank you for having me. Oh, yes, she got it like that. <laughs> Have a great week, everybody. We'll Have see you next one. week. Peace. Bye-bye.